Falling Skies is an American post-apocalyptic science fiction television series created by Robert Rodat and executive produced by Steven Spielberg. The series stars Noah Weil as Tom Mason, a former history professor who becomes the second in command of the 2nd Massachusetts Militia Regiment, a group of civilians and fighters fleeing Boston following an alien invasion that devastated the planet. The series, a production of DreamWorks Television, and from 2014 to 2015, being a production from Spielberg's Amblin Television and Warner Brothers. Television was broadcast in the United States on the cable channel TNT, and in Canada on Super Channel first -run broadcasts and on Space second -run broadcasts on a one-year delay. The series premiered on June 19, 2011. On July 18, 2014, TNT renewed the show for a 10-episode fifth and final season, which started on June 28, 2015, and concluded on August 30, 2015. Topic: Series overview. Falling Skies begins six months after a global invasion by extraterrestrials, where in only days, the invaders neutralized the world's power grid and technology, defeated and largely destroyed all the world's militaries, and killed over 90% of the human population by destroying all of the world's major cities and capitals. The aliens include mechanical attack drones called mechs, a species of light brown-skinned six-legged beings known as skitters that appear to control the mechs, and a mysterious species known as the overlords, or espeni, presumably the actual engineers of the invasion and the masters of the skitters. The aliens' objectives are not explained until season 4. They plan to extract helium-3 from Earth's moon to power their technology, and to use humanity as an enslaved frontline army in their war with another alien race. To do this, the aliens round up children between the ages of 8 and 18 and attach a biomechanical mind control harness to their spines. Forcibly removing it generally kills the child, but midway through season 1, a surgical method is developed that allows a harness to be safely removed, leaving in place the spikes that connected the harness to the spinal column. In season 5, it is revealed through an Espeni communication device, which Ben can interact with by touching it, due to having the spikes, that there is a being superior to the overlords, known as the Queen. In the series finale, the Queen explains that the invasion upon which the entire series is based is the result of a prior Espeni attempt to invade Earth, the only habitable planet in this galaxy and thus of immeasurable strategic importance. Her beloved daughter led that invasion, but the Espeni underestimated humanity and the invasion was stopped. The Queen's daughter was killed and eaten, so the Queen swore to wipe out humanity in revenge. The story follows a group of survivors who band together to fight back. They call themselves the Second Mass, an allusion to the historical regiment from the Continental Army. The group is led by retired United States Army Colonel Dan Weaver. Boston University history professor Tom Mason is second in command and must put his extensive knowledge of military history into practice while searching for his son Ben. At the end of season two, a new alien race known as the Volm are introduced. Led by a Volm nicknamed Cochise by Tom Mason, the Volm are another species who the Espeni conquered in their galactic expansion, and who want to destroy the Espeni in revenge. While more Volm forces arrive at the end of Season 3, an attack on the Volm across the galaxy causes all but Cochise and a small team of Volm to abandon the Earth. Cochise and his soldiers continue to aid humanity in their war with the Espeni despite the lack of support from their superiors, notably Cochise's father. In Season 4, a devastating Espeni counterattack relegates humanity to Espeni-controlled ghettos across the planet. Meanwhile, Tom's half-Espeni daughter Alexis continues to grow and develop psychic powers due to her heritage. After the second mass eventually escape the ghettos, another attack severely depletes their numbers. Learning of a power core on the moon that controls all Espeni technology, Tom and Alexis launch an attack on the power core using a captured Espeni spacecraft. Alexis sacrifices herself to destroy the power core and Tom is left lost in space, but the Espeni war machine is left crippled with the loss of their air support and mechanized servants. In Season 5, Tom is rescued by the Asfena's ancient enemy, the Dornia, who guide him into finding his inner warrior to defeat the Espeni once and for all. Returned to Earth, Tom rallies humanity into a global resistance that will march on major Espeni bases all over the world. Tom leads the militias in the United States in a march on the Espeni base in Washington, D.C. 
With the help of an Espeni communications device, humanity learns that the Espeni serve a previously unknown queen who comes to planets when victory is assured and the Espeni are moving from invasion to occupation. Indeed, while in Washington, Tom spots signs of the Espeni moving in on Earth. Tracking the queen to the ruins of the Lincoln Memorial, Tom confronts her alone and she informs him of the true reason for the invasion. Tom manages to infect the Espeni queen with a Dornia bioweapon, killing her and spreading the bioweapon throughout the Espeni species. The Espeni are destroyed and the Earth is freed. Months later, humanity is united and makes plans to elect a new leader. When Tom is offered the position, he refuses it. <laughs> Cast and characters Topic Main Topic Recurring Topic Production Topic Conception Development officially began in 2009, when TNT announced that it had ordered a pilot for an untitled alien invasion project. Falling Skies was created by Robert Rodat, who is best known for writing the Oscar-winning film Saving Private Ryan, which was directed by Steven Spielberg. Rodat wrote the pilot episode from an idea which was co-conceived by Spielberg. Originally, Falling Skies was called Concord, referencing the battles of Lexington and Concord and Tom Mason's former profession as a history professor. Spielberg then came up with the title Falling Skies. I felt that this was a very interesting post-apocalyptic story with a 21st century spin on the spirit of 76. I came up out of the blue one day with the name Falling Skies, which is basically what happens to the planet after this invasion. What is unique about this particular series is that the story starts after a successful conquest of the world. He stated, Spielberg was attracted to the project due to its themes of survival. I've always been interested in how we survive and how resourceful we are as Americans. How would the survivors feed the children? How do they resupply themselves militarily in order to defend and even take back what they have lost? He added. Like much of Spielberg's work, such as The Pacific and E.T. The Extraterrestrial, Falling Sky's running theme is family and brotherhood. He explained, It's a theme I hearken back to a lot because it's something I believe in. It's something I have the closest experience with. Laughs, they say write what you know, and with seven children and three sisters. I tend to always come back to the family as a touchstone for audiences to get into these rather bizarre stories. While writing the pilot, Rodat dedicated a five-page montage to the alien invasion, but decided not to go through with it as it had been done before in films such as War of the Worlds. I wrote a few drafts of it and I looked at it and say, I yay yay, I've seen this before. There's no emotion to this. It feels like one of those montages. He said. Rodat came up with the idea of having the children in the series. Harnessed by aliens. When we were working out the initial stuff, the thing that excited Spielberg was the idea that adults are killed if they're a threat, and kids are captured for whatever reason and changed or altered. The harness was a logical outgrowth of that. Then what we'll explore is what the harnessing does to the kid over the course of the show but that also is something that's going to have to unveil itself gradually." He stated. Spielberg previously explored the idea of enslaved children in the 1984 film Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Series led Noah Weil emphasized Spielberg's presence on set by stating, Anytime he gives an anointment to a project, it steps up the pedigree. Colin Cunningham, who plays outlaw John Pope, said, You'd show up and think, this is not a TV show, this is something else that we're doing. Noting that Spielberg was very hands on for the pilot. Its scope is massive. Anytime you hear the word Spielberg, you know it's not going to be crap, you know it'll be quality and there will be some money behind it." Mark Verheiden, who was the showrunner for the first season, stated, It's great to know you have a world-class filmmaker backing up what you're trying to do who is supportive and helping design the great stuff.
Topic: <laughs> Casting. Casting announcements began in June 2009 when Noah Weil was announced as the lead. Weil, who worked with TNT on the Librarian films, was sent scripts for various shows on their network. He said part of the reason he chose the part was to gain credibility from his children. With the birth of my kids, I started to really look at my career through their eyes more than my own, so that does dictate choice, steering me toward certain things and away from other things. He said, he also decided to do it as he could relate with his character, stating, I identified with Tom's devotion to his sons, and admired his sense of social duty. Spielberg wanted Weil for the role because he knew him from his previous series Er, which Spielberg's company produced. He had wanted Weil to appear in his 1998 film Saving Private Ryan, but Weil was unavailable due to scheduling conflicts. Spielberg stated that he was determined to work with him again. In July 2009, Moon Bloodgood was cast as Anne Glass, Jesse Schramm was cast as Karen Nadler, Seychelle Gabriel was cast as Lords, and Maxim Knight was cast as Matt Mason. Bloodgood, the female lead, did not have to audition for the role. She received the script and was offered the role. Bloodgood was drawn to the role because of Spielberg and Rodate's involvement. She stated, well certainly when you get handed a script and they tell you it's Bob Rodat and Steven Spielberg, you're immediately drawn to it. It's got your attention. I was a little cautious about wanting to do science fiction again. But it was more of a drama story, more of a family story. I liked that and I wanted to work with Spielberg." Bloodgood added that portraying a doctor excited her. I liked the idea of playing a doctor and deviating from something I had done already. She said, in August 2009, Drew Roy was cast as Hal Mason, and Peter Shinkoda was cast as Di. Drew Roy's agent received the script and the pair joked that Roy might get the role. This one came to me through my agent, just like everything else. We even joked about the fact that it was a Steven Spielberg project. We were like, oh yeah, I might have a chance. Quote. We were just joking. He auditioned four times for the part. Quote. The whole process went on for quite some time, and then towards the end, it was down to me and one other guy, and we were literally waiting for the word from Steven Spielberg cause he had to watch the two audition tapes and give the okay. That, in and of itself, had me like, okay, even if I don't get it, that's just cool, fortunately, it went my way. Topic. Filming The pilot was filmed in 2009 in Oshawa, Ontario, and the rest of the season was shot from July to November of the following year in Hamilton and Toronto. TNT announced production had begun on the second season on October 24, 2011. Filming took place in Vancouver and at the Riverview Hospital in Coquitlam, British Columbia from October 2011 to March 2012. Principal photography for the third season commenced on August 22, 2012, and concluded in December. Topic. Production team Rodat and Spielberg serve as executive producers on the project. Graham Yost, Justin Falvey, and Daryl Frank are also executive producers. Yost had previously worked with Spielberg on the HBO miniseries The Pacific. Mark Verheiden is a co-executive producer and the series showrunner. Verheiden had worked as a writer and producer on Battlestar Galactica. Greg Beeman is also a co-executive producer. Melinda Shue Taylor is a supervising producer for the series, she previously worked on Lost. John Ryan is the on-set producer. Remy Albican was hired as the showrunner for the second season in May 2011 before the first season premiere. Noah Weil became a producer for the second season. Topic. Reception Topic. Critical reception For the first season, the series had a mostly positive reception. Tim Goodman of The Hollywood Reporter wrote, The entertainment value and suspense of falling skies is paced just right. You get the sense that we'll get those answers eventually. And yet, you want to devour the next episode immediately. Thomas Connor of the Chicago Sun-Times called it.
a trustworthy family drama but with aliens. He continued, it's Jericho meets V, with the good from both and the bad discarded. It'll raise the summer TV bar significantly. Ken Tucker from Entertainment Weekly gave the series a B plus and wrote, a similar, gradually developed, but decisive conviction makes Falling Skies an engaging, if derivative, chunk of dystopian sci-fi." He continued, Falling Skies rises above any one performance, it's the spectacle of humans versus aliens that draws you in." In the Boston Herald, Mark A. Paragard gave the series a B grade, writing, "...don't look now, but Falling Skies could be a summer obsession." Brian Lowry from Variety gave the series a mixed review, stating that he enjoyed the action sequences, but that the soapier elements mostly fall flat, and called the series painfully old-fashioned. The second season had positive reviews. Some critics praised it as being stronger than the first season. Maureen Ryan of the Huffington Post compared the second season to the first by saying, Season 2 is a different animal, a much leaner and meaner machine that allows sentiment to be present but unexpressed and depicts a darker world in which innocence is a luxury that no one can truly afford." Chuck Barney declared, "...Sunday's explosive two-hour opener boldly delivers on the promise by TNT producers to rev up both the pace and the firepower in Season 2." Screen Rant's Anthony Ocasio lauded the season premiere. While further episodes will reveal more, the type of character development, intriguing storylines and exciting action that will be contained in Falling Skies Season 2, there's no doubt that TNT's hit drama will likely become an epic adventure, spanning many seasons," he said. <laughs> <laughs> Ratings The two-hour premiere of Falling Skies was watched by 5.9 million viewers, making it cable television's biggest series launch of the year, with more than 2.6 million adults 18 to 49 and 3.2 million adults 25 to 54. The eighth episode was watched by 4.31 million viewers and scored a 1.5 ratings share among adults 18 to 49 and Falling Skies became TNT's highest rated series in target demos. The first season finale had 5.6 million viewers, the highest rated episode since the series premiere, with 2.5 million viewers in the 18-49 demographic. The first season tied with the FX series American Horror Story as the biggest new cable series of the year among adults 18-49. In the UK, it premiered on non-terrestrial channel FX, with 402,000 viewers. Awards and nominations Distribution Online promotion For the first season, character videos were made available online. The videos explore the main characters of the series. As part of the promotional campaign, a vehicle, with the TNT logo and called Falling Skies Technical, was released as a free gift in the social networking game Mafia Wars on June 14, 2011. Following the second season premiere on June 17, 2012, a live after show titled Second Watch hosted by Will Wheaton premiered. The series airs after encore presentations of Falling Skies on TNT's official site. Wheaton discusses the latest episode with actors and producers of the series. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Comic books. In September 2010, Dark Horse Comics, in partnership with DreamWorks Television and TNT, released the first issue in a four-part digital comic online limited series entitled Falling Skies. Written by Paul Tobin with art by Juan Ferreira, the series details events taking place before season one of the television show, but after the alien invasion and victory. These issues were later compiled into a single trade paperback volume entitled Falling Skies Volume 1, which was released June, 2011. On June 15, 2011, Dark Horse announced that due to higher than anticipated orders, the graphic novel had completely sold out. It remains in publication as of June 2012.
In April 2012, Dark Horse began releasing a second eight issue limited series entitled Falling Skies The Battle of Fitchburg, with Paul Tobin returning as writer and Juan Ferreira returning as series artist. The digital comic was made available through both Dark Horse Comics and TNT via their respective websites. The story takes place chronologically between seasons 1 and 2 of the television show, and details a costly engagement occurring between the Skitters and the 2nd Massachusetts Militia Regiment when the aliens surround the human forces at Fitchburg, Massachusetts. While not vital to the story of the television series, TNT and Dark Horse have stated that Falling Skies, the Battle of Fitchburg provides insight into the events leading up to season 2, and will elaborate on how the characters got to where they are when the new season opens. As a companion to the comic, TNT released an audio series featuring the character John Pope, offering additional insight into the events detailed in the comic series. Topic: <laughs> Blu-ray and DVD releases. The first season was released on DVD and Blu-ray on June 5, 2012, in North America, on July 2, 2012, in the United Kingdom and on August 29, 2012, in Australia, and on DVD only in South Africa on August 27, 2012. In addition to all the episodes of the first season, extras include an extended version of the pilot episode, audio commentary on the pilot episode, a season 2 preview, the 2011 San Diego Comic-Con International Panel, deleted scenes, character profiles, international promos, behind-the-scenes featurettes including the Making of Skitter, Harness Makeup Tips, and Director One-on-One. -on -one. A collectible trading card was released exclusively to Blu-ray. Topic. Broadcast The series premiered on June 19, 2011, and is broadcast on the cable television channel TNT, in the United States. In summer 2011, it premiered internationally in more than 75 countries. In Australia, Falling Skies premiered on Fox 8. The full series is also available on Netflix Australia and Latin America. The program is showing on Super Channel in Canada. In the United Kingdom and Ireland, it is broadcast on Fox and, from the 11th of January 2014, the digital channel 5 asterisk. Topic Other. The series seasons 1 to 5 is also available on Amazon Video. All five seasons were free to Amazon Prime subscribers until November 27, 2017.